Stuart here from Stubio Gaming. Um, firstly, I must apologise if you hear growling in the background. For some reason, my dog has decided to take offence to my TV. Um, so whenever there is a picture moving on the screen, he starts staring at it and growling like mad. Doesn't matter what's on screen, it can literally be an intro. Um, doesn't matter whether the sound, it's just the picture. So we're in a situation where you'll probably hear him growling quite a lot during this video. I'll uh, try and stop it for future, but um, I've just been trying for an absolute age, hence why this video is actually late. But anyway, let's get into the video. So the whole idea of this video is to talk on how to get the seer. So the requirements for unlocking the seer is, I don't even know whether I can see it from in here. Yes, I can. So use the Bifrost to exit 10 worlds. Now, when you first start, the Bifrost is this little icon here. And while it's greyed out, it means it's inactive. Now, the only way to actually make that active is to kill a Jotun. <coughs> Excuse me. The only way to kill a Jotun is to wait until at the earliest day two. Now, to get to day two relatively simply, um, and I must make a shout out to all of the guys in my Discord channel for this. They have been helping me quite considerably. Uh, my amount of time in games so far has been quite poor, if I'm being honest. Um, I, I haven't been able to play that much at all. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of learning as I go. So first and foremost, you're going to want to um, level up your Tinkerer, Armourer and Blacksmith to level 3. The reason you do those potentially in that order, but to be perfectly honest, as long as you do the Tinkerer first, the other two don't actually matter. The Tinkerer you need to level 3 for logs, or sorry, wooden boards and um, cut stone and iron wrought iron I think it's called and those are needed to basically fix all of the other things in the area so your lumber yard your quarry and all of those now the reason you need all of those is because they will then allow you to fortify not only your town but other areas so you will for instance for advanced crafting need a lot of materials so you will need to start looking after uh, building defences, building towers, all of that sort of lovely stuff. So let's just get myself a pickaxe and then straight away I'm going to put my 76 souls into levelling up the Tinkerer. Now to get a good number of souls straight away you want to start going to the camps. Now the camps are these things here. The size of the logs with the flame, so basically the size of the campfire, determines how big the camp is. The bigger the camp, the better the rewards, but also the more enemies that will be in it. So let's head on over. Now, another thing that was mentioned by my Discord channel is if you want to run faster, stick to the paths. The paths actually do give you a speed boost. Now, as a mechanic in a game of this nature, that's actually really, really good. Okay, so... Let's go back to the path and you can see the little burst of speed that you get right there so we're practically at the camp so yeah this is a small one you can see there's two people these two that I'm fighting right now and inside the camp we have a chest now once we open that chest currently I've got 68 souls once I open this chest we are going to end up with quite a number. There we go, 313 souls. So I gained 245 just from that small camp. So you can imagine what the bigger camps are going to do for you. So let's carry on. Obviously farm as many trees, rocks and metal deposits as you possibly can. The metal deposits will give you iron and iron ore. Um, both are required to make wrought iron. And the trees will obviously give you wood. So that's always useful. So wood and spruce needles for that, for instance. So we're now moving into a new biome. These ones are actually quite useful. I haven't managed to at the moment. But what you can do is you can... Uh, go to the swamp and you can unlock both the...
both the seer, uh, sorry, both the berserker and the sentinel here. Um, so you can defeat 20 enemies in 10 seconds by going into one of the big camps, let them surround you, and then basically just kill them all quickly. Uh, Sentinel, you can basically do the same, let them all surround you, and then let them attack you while you're blocking. Now, I would advise, if you're playing single player, as soon as you get a skill point um, and you have unlocked the Warden, uh, use that. Initially, I was using the Warrior, um, but to be honest, it's not that great as a character once you've unlocked all of the others so i like the warden for solo simply because you can avoid any damage to your items so as soon as you get to this stage here um you don't take any uh is that the one i think that's the one oh no that's the one Ever useful, Wardens have somehow mastered the art of using equipment without it ever affecting their durability. So you'll never have to repair your items once you unlock that. Now these are also useful. Um, these are waypoints or shrines and they allow you to fast travel um, to different locations. Do not worry too much about going back to town for the first two nights because your guys can actually defend the town pretty well. Uh, and your tree is not going to take too much damage. So get some of the night harvesting in. Again, you will get things like this yew tree here. You can see that it's glowing slightly. And that's because it's um, actually midnight yew. So it's got some bonuses because it's night time. Which is, as you can imagine, rather useful. And there are a lot of uh, other items or other plants, etc. That get bonuses at night. Right, so. Where's this camp? So I've got a few things following me. Uh, I've got a few things following me now. No, not enough. So let's keep wandering around to gather a few more. Oh, mushrooms. There's another one, so that'll be useful. Just try and collect us. There you go, so the tribe survived, even though one of them got knocked out. You can get points for actually healing them. Um, right, they've all run off, which isn't helpful. So yeah, basically, if you want to try and uh, unlock some of the other characters, you do have to find a big enemy camp in this sort of swampy area. It's the easiest way. You can do it other ways, I suppose, but that's definitely the easiest way. So, don't tend to pick the mushrooms during the day, um, simply because you're going to have better items gained at night. You'll get the same items, but you'll also get better ones as well. It's like a double drop during the night, so it's always useful to uh, wait until that point. These blue icons on the map, so this one here and this one down here are actually other people within the world. This one is a shop where you can sell items for souls if you need to, so that can be useful. Um, kill the snakes. So I'm actually not sure whether that camp is above me. I think it is, so I can't actually get to that one at the moment anyway. Oh, there's three more. Wow, I think that's actually the bridge that I need to repair. Yeah, it is. That's, that's the bridge that I need to repair to uh, finish the game, in effect. Oh. Those guys are horrific. Um, extremely hard to kill as well. I think I am going to try and get around them as much as possible. And I might teleport back to uh, town. So you are given, when you start the game, a waypoint. Um, not a shard. Shard's the wrong word. But basically it's a, a waypoint crystal. Ooh, there's quite a few here, actually. Let's get them all here. Oh, 
There we go. So Sentinel unlocked. Now, I obviously haven't got 20 enemies here, but I have got quite a few. So I've got my Sentinel. Again, Sentinel's pretty good multiplayer because it's the most defensive of the uh, character classes. So let's... Let's heal myself. Shouldn't actually have used that, but I am waiting until the Jotun arrives. And I'm doing that so I can uh, hopefully kill it. But we've got 595 souls from everything that we've done so far. Um... I haven't opened, actually, I haven't opened the chest at that last camp that I've just been to. I killed everything and then legged it, didn't I? So, let's go and open that chest. That'll get me a load more. And then I will uh, head back to town. There we go. Ordinary treasure. So, there's not going to be many here, but there are obviously going to be a fair few. 855 at the moment. Now... The idea is that you do get some um, nice bonuses for exiting with 10,000 souls. Now, that's an extremely difficult task, simply because 10,000 souls is a lot for a start. And on top of that, you also have the added um, difficulty of... Whoa, this is not good. Oh, he drowned. Nice. Come on, charge me. Charge yourself into the water. Ow. He's stunning me, that's the problem. Oh. Right. Oh, there's another one that's uh, just managed to get himself uh, killed. Hoping that was going to hit him then. Right, so oh, I'm going to teleport back to town. There we go. I'm going to level up the Tinkerer. Going to level her up to level three. Now, the best thing for defeating the Jotun is getting a good weapon. Um, so, as far as the weapon, you need to level up the blacksmith first because the first weapons that he's got are pretty rubbish in effect. So once you get to this stage, then that's pretty useful. Uh, the Zagins and the Serpent Tong. Now, both of those actually have dark effect, so they're good against the Wind Stroke Lightning Jotun. If you get the Dark Jotun, you basically need Lightning. Um, if you get the Ice, you need Fire, and so on and so forth. So, you can pick Axes. Axes are faster than Swords. So, if possible, it's definitely good to go for Axes. The problem that you have is Ice Unfrozen Talismans you need to get from the Ice area. And anything that requires Ice or Fire, you're really going to str struggle with. Simply because... When it really comes down to it, um, it's just a very difficult thing to get because you're just going to die as soon as you go in there. So, I need Wolf's Teeth, Feral Hammer, um, is better than the one I've got, um, or I can go for bows. Um, I can actually get that bow already, which is just a little bit scary. So, I'm actually going to purchase a bow for the first time since uh, starting this game. So let's equip that to um, let's equip that to slot one, and then we'll equip that sword to slot two. Right. So I've got a bow. I've never had a bow before. This is very weird. I don't don't know what I'm doing with this this bow. So we're waiting. It's starting to go dark again. So hell things will start appearing again. Um, because I'm here this time, I'm actually going to get souls and um, 
trinkets. So it could be the fingernails, it could be healthing rings. There's various different things that I can actually unlock. I've got 25 souls left and I've got a level up point. So I'm going to put the level up point into my non-damage for items. So now everything that I have equipped will never degrade any further. And that basically means we'll never die. We'll never break. I've got full health, so I don't need to use her healing ability. So once I've leveled up these guys to level 3, um, you can obviously go all the way to level 5, um, but level 3 is kind of the, the good point where you know you're going to have a pretty decent defenders. Um, so... Yeah, I personally would go Tinkerer, uh, Blacksmith, and then Armourer. That's just my personal choice, of course. This bow is really good against health things, simply because it's doing lightning damage. Now, I haven't got any special arrows. This is just bog standard. You can find better arrows. These, these that seem to track, or they're ricocheting off things. That's just crazy. I would say, as a, a, a solo character, the bow's probably not the best. Right, okay, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the bow solo. Um, I mean, we'll have to see how well it does against a Jotun in a minute. You can wait until, like, day four or five when the Jotun gets really close to your village, but I quite often find it's better to go out and try and find it. Um, right, so... Let's put some more levels into actually let's put some levels into these let's try and level them up equally because I do need some better armor I think and we are going to go for so I've got bow mastery or sword so Oh, he's mastery of everything. That's nice. Craft items for, re for reduced cost. Okay. Turn to your feet faster. Regain full health and mana instantly whenever you teleport using the waystone no matter the destination. Excellent. That's nice. I'm not going to do much building because I'm literally just going to go straight to the Jotun. So I'm not going to worry about that one. Let's go for the crafted stuff currently. Right, so. I need to go for this Jotun. down nice so this is a resource bridge they're really useful um, so these will actually give me a lot of materials like wooden planks and cut stone for instance 
So that's cut stone, wrought iron, wooden board. So and it would just give you normal resource as well. Very useful early game. So if you come across those things and you haven't up, uh, upgraded the quarry, fixed the quarry or whatever it might be, that's basically what you need to do. Okay, so I need to. Oh, another another resource bridge. That's nice. So I have got different arrows. That one obviously does more. This is infinite. So these arrows are infinite. I'll stick with these until I get to the Jota. I actually don't know where that Jotun is, so it's a case of searching, and unfortunately that searching can take quite a long time. I might even end up going the wrong way. You can of course wait until it gets next to your, your uh, village. Oh, I don't want to be down here. Problem is, I've tripped myself down here and actually have no way of getting back up because I don't know where the uh, slope is. And because I didn't pick the, I didn't pick the build anywhere option. I can't build myself up. So. Good, run away. Okay, so I am literally a hundred power too low for this location. Oh no, it's a resource bridge. bridge without um, alerting them too much. Okay. I'll take this way shrine and I'm going to teleport here. Because it looks like Jotun is going to be around here. down okay not good but I can at least teleport there and get my stuff back because hopefully that ogre is at the top Jotun should be getting close to the village soon. Right, 
Let's go get that. Uh, go get my chest and then go back to town. Unfortunately, when you die, you lose all your souls and you can't get them back. Um, you basically have to start again. Alright, so that's all my actual loot reclaimed. Perfect timing. this side. Oh my god, they're uh, starting to come in quite thick and fast, so... Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the bow. I reckon it would be fine multiplayer, but single player, you kind of need to get in there to stop them. It might also be because I'm just rubbish at aiming with it, but... Okay. Right, so that Jotun's going to be getting uh, close to the town any minute. So I'm going to collect as many souls as I possibly can. See whether I've got enough for. Yeah, I can't get. I can't get any level three. I've got Sigin's blade though, so I can get Sigin's blade. So I'm going to craft that. That is going to be um, really useful because I've got my lightning bow and then dark for my other weapon. So if I apply that, that's going to go in equipment slot two. So now, whenever I change weapon, I'm going to have a much better chance. So let's see about getting some wooden boards. I've got 19. That's actually really good. 9 and 10. Wow. So other than the souls, I'm now pretty much set for quarries north. So I'm going to do the quarry first. Um... So yeah, that's basically going to give me all I need for leveling up the quarry. I do, however, need 600 souls, I believe. Yeah, I do. So let's put the 92 in. Let's put all of the boards, all of the iron. There we go. So it's just the souls. Now, if I defeated this Jotun... Um, I mean, I'm saying if, because depending on which one it was, it was going to be a difficult fight. But if I defeated him, I could then use the souls that I'd gained from him to uh, basically um, finish off the quarry. And that would put me in good stead for finishing off all the rest and starting more fortifications.
getting quite a few things while I'm doing this. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong. I'm wondering where that Jotun is actually going to come from. Yeah, so it's close to the village, but whereabouts? Blood Moon as well. Oh, there he is. These are lightning arrows that I'm using. I haven't got many left, but they are doing slightly more damage to the Jotun, so I'm going to stick with these for the time being. Obviously the zero damage taken to my weapons is uh, a huge help during these fights because normally you'd probably go through um, at least half a weapon's worth of uh, durability fighting a Jotun. Ooh, did not mean to get stuck by that. actually further away from my uh... right let's try these oh they're pretty uh, damaging as well So the number of souls that we're going to get for that, oh, 1,737. Okay, now, you probably uh, saw it said, well it should have said the Bifrost is now open. And if we go to the map and we have a look at the Bifrost, it's no longer just grey. It's got like a purple bottom and a white top. What that means is we are now able to exit the map. Now, to get the seer, as the purpose of this video is, um, we need to do that 10 times. So in effect, you need to defeat 10 Jotun, minimum, um, to be able to do this. So if you want to do it while trying to also gain some other character classes, then the chances are you're going to need to kill more Jotun, so therefore it's going to take you longer to do, because you only unlock the Seer after you've used this to leave the world ten times. And there we go. At the end of your journey, I suppose, um, if you defeat one and leave, then you will get this congratulations screen. Um, you'll get your level up, etc, etc. Now, unfortunately, the record isn't working um, because it only ever tells you what happened in that particular game, which is very odd because I have survived 15 days. I've slain three Jotun, um, or Jutnar as they call them there, and uh, a lot more experience was gained as well. So I don't know why it's only showing you your last game values, as you can see. Um but hopefully that will be fixed soon. So what we then do is we back out and it takes us right back to the start screen. Now your player level is still level eight, 
but as soon as you start a new solo game, your character will be reset to zero. The reason my character is wearing stuff is because I've unlocked some rewards by leveling up, and I have then gone and altered my character, uh, my protection, so I've got a shield, um, I've got this armor here, but on top of that, my character there allows me to start with villagers starter set, so that gives me the villagers armor, weapons, etc. So you get a sword and shield. I could have this one, the archer, so I start with the villager bow, arrows times 100, and a rune. Um, or I could start with this one where I basically get a lumber axe and a pickaxe and a rune. But that's basically it. You can obviously select different pets if you've unlocked them, portraits and stuff like that, but you do that when you first create your character anyway. So I seem to have done a class challenge, so I can claim the Sentinel. So that now allows me to use the Sentinel in my next game, so I have two left, the Berserker and the Seer. So uh, yeah, Seer is my next challenge. But there we go, that's what you need to do. Um, every time you defeat a Jotun, leave, once you've done that ten times, you will unlock that Seer character. Well guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please make sure you do click the like button. Subscribe if you are new to the channel or if you haven't done so already. Share the video with all of your friends and please do leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the video and anything else you'd like to see in the future. If you want to support me more, please follow the link to the Patreon page. It's displayed on screen and I look forward to seeing you for my next video very soon. You'll take care. Bye for now.